All right, so as we continue with 5.3, as I mentioned today, I'm going to show you how to use the graphing technology to find standard deviation and to find the mean and some other things. But I do want to explain one thing that we are going to see uh, when we do this with the calculator. And I'll come back to it, but on the calculator screen, what you're going to see is you're going to see this sigma, sigma x, and that's the one that we are going to be using. There is another um, line, there's a different answer that is like capital S of x, and I won't get too much into it now, but just, just in case you wonder why we're not using that one, um, there's two different things the calculator calculates. One is for um, the, the data that you list in the calculator. If that is the entire population, if that's all the numbers that you're considering, then this is the one that you use to find standard deviation. If this is just a sample of numbers from a larger population, there's, there's some bias correction and it actually uses a slightly different formula to correct for the fact that this is just a sample. We are not going to worry about that at all, okay? So don't worry about that. When we get to it and you'll see the other number there, you're just going to ignore that anyways, okay? So just so you know, um, there's a little bit on that because I, I was looking at the calculator yesterday and I'm like, oh, there's going to be a question on that. So uh, we are going to be going back to uh, 5.3 a little bit. And we're going to be taking a look at this data. Do you remember we, we did an example yesterday? Maybe just kind of find that on your page. We did class A and class B, the manual method, and we found out, and I'll try and get to it here. Where is it? Oh, it's below this. We found out, so here's a little bit of that work. Okay, for A, we found out that the standard deviation was 14.27. So from the mean, you can think of it this way, sort of the... Um, the spread out on average is about 14, you know, from the, from the mean there in, in percents. And B, after calculation, was quite a bit smaller. That means that data is grouped quite a bit closer together. Okay? So, we got to know how to use this formula and understand how it works. But we are going to be working with the graphing calculators today. And I have one up on my screen and I'm going to uh, hand them out to you in, in a brief second here. But we're going to do get the calculator to calculate standard deviation for us for the examples that we did yesterday, just to make sure we get the same numbers, okay, and make sure we're doing things right. But that's what uh, largely today's lesson is going to be. I'm going to walk you through how to use the graphing calculator. So I'll hand those out now. All right, so you all have graphing calculators now. That's the, that was the world's quickest handout. And, oh, lost my notes. Anyways, this is your calculator, so you want to turn it on. You can clear, hit clear to clear the screen. But what we want to do here to input the data into the graphing calculator is we want to go to uh, stat right here. Okay, stat. So push the stat button and this menu should show up right there. Edit calc test, this one. You can stay on the edit screen. I'm going to try and get my notes back here. Computer. Okay, thank you. All right, so everyone see that? Stat. Now hit stat, enter. So you hit enter. And you should get to a screen that looks something like this right here. Something like that. Okay? So enter stat menu. And what you want to do is... So when you get to this menu, you may see that there are some lists and that lists that have numbers in them. If you want to... If you want to... Um, Clear a list. Now, please, do not, at this point, do not hit delete, okay, because that list will now be gone forever, and I'm not going to tell you how to get it back, because I don't even know if I know. So don't hit delete. You're not deleting the entire list. You're clearing it. So please go up to, you know, L1 or whatever one you want to clear, and hit clear, and then enter, and then it will be empty, okay? So that's how you clear a list. Just go up to L1, hit clear, and enter, okay? Now, you do not have to be in L1, but if you have L1 there, that'll it'll just make it easier because I'm going to be using L1 so all my button pushes will be L1 so simply what you do now let's let's go to class A and we're going to look at these numbers on the screen and you're going to type these in literally just put 94 it'll show up down here that the first one in list 1 is 94 and then enter and then you go through and put the other ones in 56 and 89 and all this sort of stuff yeah, if you want to clear your list, you have to highlight L1 to so go all the way up to the top. Okay, so if you got this list, uh, the, the numbers in the list here, and it, this is super easy, super easy. Stat menu, enter, you get the list screen, you put them in, okay? And they should be in there. 
Now what you do is you hit stat again, okay? Stat again, and I'll, I'll, I'll adjust these steps here. Stat again, and then you go over cursor to the right to calculate. So now you want the calculate screen. So now look, all this stuff on here, pretty cool. Um, this is regression that we'll take a look at in Foundations 30 if you go there. Um, but we're going to do just, number one, one var stats. How do you get there? Stat, and then right cursor over to calc menu there. Okay? All right? So from there, you just hit either hit the one or enter. And this should show up now on your home screen. Okay? If you hit enter now, you're going to get, um, okay, well, I guess you will get that. Uh, if you only have data in one list, you don't have to worry about stating the list. But for most of you, you will have to state the list. So let's do that again over to calc, one var stats. How do you tell the calculator which list you want to, it to do all this um, number crunching on? You do second function, and you see in the little yellow letters there, L1, L2, L3, those are the lists. And so you would do second function one, which gives you L1. So again, if you have other lists that are full of numbers, the calculator probably will just take the first one. And, but if you want to state which list you're in, because some of you on your calculators might not have list one. Somebody might have deleted it already. So if you put it into another list, you, do, you just do this. You hit enter, and this should show up on your screen. All right, so before I, I, before I record all the steps here, uh, many of you are in this screen now. And take a look at this. See sigma x? 14.2688. Now if you compare that to the example we did it the long way, look at 14.27. See, 14.2688. That's what we got. Okay, so that was pretty straightforward, right? It was pretty simple, right? So isn't that nice that we have technology? When it works, it's awesome. Yeah, when it works. Now, in grade 11s, here's the other the other uh, sigma, the other standard deviation here. Remember that? So we're not going to use this number. We're going to use the number at the bottom. But what else does this tell you? This also gives you, look at this, x bar, 78. So we calculated that, right? Now you don't have to calculate it. The calculator will calculate it for you. That's its job. So you've got the mean there. You also have the sum of all the numbers, should you need that. You also have the sum of all the numbers squared. And so there are little pieces in here that it, that it gives, OK? Um, I haven't checked two of our stats uh, in a while. I can't remember what that is. But it also gives you this. Look at n equals 5. You see that? N equals, so that tells you there was five data items that you put in there. So if this is not right, if there was actually six tests, then you might have missed something when you put it in your list. So it's so all that stuff. Okay? So I tell you what. Why don't, we, why don't we try the two of our stats? I don't even know what that does. Two of our stats. Okay? And for list one, let's see. What does that give us? Oh, error. Some argument error. Two var stats. Okay. Okay. Then don't worry about that. I'm not sure what it does. We'll figure that out another time, maybe. Okay. So again, stat menu enter. That's to get to your lists. Uh, simply plug in your numbers. Okay. So the number enter, number enter. Then hit stat again. And you don't want the edit menu. You want the calculate menu. We're going to do one var stats. So enter. And then tell the calculator which list to draw from. <clears throat> you should get this screen right here. Yes, yeah. Second function, the list. See the little yellow pieces there. Yeah. Okay. All right. So let's uh, let's write out the steps so that we're all on the same page here. Okay. So here's the steps um, to finding this. Very important. So we hit the, and I'm going to follow along on the calculator here on the screen. So enter the stat menu by hitting the stat button right there. Okay, So this is the stat menu. You do want to edit. So you just push the button enter to edit to get into the list screen. And that's step number two. If you want to clear a screen, then you go up cursor up to the uh, title of the list there. This one in this case, it hit clear, not delete, but clear. And that will clear. I don't want to do that because I actually want some data to come up. So you enter in your numbers then just by hitting the number, enter, number, enter, number, enter, number, enter. Then you want to ask the calculator to do the stats on this list. And so you now hit the stat button again, cursor right to the calc menu. That's, that's step number five. One var stats is what you're looking for. Hit enter. OK, and I'll just clear this screen so we start from scratch. Hit enter, and this shows up. Choose um, a list. 
So you do second function, my numbers were in list one, then hit enter, and that's the exact screen that you should get for those numbers. All right, so that's how you use uh, stats, and of course this sigma x here, that's the standard deviation. And there's the mean, x bar is the mean, 78 in this case, and there are five data items that you inputted into your list. Okay, how's that? Good? Is that going to make things a little bit easier uh, for these long numbers? Okay, so I think I asked you to do from the textbook, I think I asked you to do uh, one and five with the manual method. Okay, I know, I'm... Uh, torturing you, it's bordering on abuse, I know, but um, you know what, I'm okay with that, um, really, so, <laughs> hey, I'm a teacher, life's supposed to be a little uncomfortable sometimes, come on, so where are they, so number one, uh, actually number one was the one, the example we did, so I, I'm so nice, okay, number five, so you should have done number five here manually, all right, you can, uh, no, you checked the back of the book already, so you know whether you did that right or not, but certainly on a test, do things manually, then, if you have time, you quickly check it on your calculator to see if you did things right. Right? You could do that if you have time. Okay, so I'll give you the rest of the, um, the, rest of the questions. I am going to be able to give you questions that have more data to put in. So, um, just, just be aware of that. Okay, so let's just... So the last thing I'll point out here is how we use a frequency table. Um, so, how do we determine the average if we aren't given the exact values here? We're just given a number of items in a range. So we don't know if these 16 are all 7, uh, or if they're all 8s or whatever, right? Or 9s or whatever. So, <clears throat> okay. So what, what would we do here? There's, there's 7, okay, in this frequency. Uh, so. What they, what they are suggesting to do is that you take the midpoint of the interval and you find an average of what those would be. So if it's three to five hours, the midpoint of this interval would be four. And so if there's seven of them, we would say there is seven uh, of items of number four. So we don't know if there's some you know, four, some five, some whatever. So we just take the midpoint and find the average and then we add up all those, okay? So, um, so I guess what we would do then for number two, let's say, okay, 101 to 105. So what's the middle number? Well, we've got 10, um, 101, 102, 103, 104, 105. And actually, we're not going to count the bottom number, I don't think, right? Because that, or no, this one is separated. So those are different. So 101, 2, 3, 4, and 5, okay? So the middle number would be 103. So on your calculator then, you would use the midpoint here, and you would say, uh, let's get to my on, stat menu, enter, let's go to list two. So one oh, uh, what do we say, one, two, three, is one, so one, oh, three, okay? So I have one, oh, three. And uh, we have three of these. So if you're listing item by item, um, you really should uh, you really should do this if this way I think you should do this enter it three times so six seven eight nine ten so that's 108 so let's say there's three 108s 108 uh, enter 108 enter 108 enter okay so I think with the uh, with the graphing calculator I think you're going to want to do it this way again um, I haven't actually looked looked into this. The only problem is, is the dispersion is going to be just an estimate because we don't have the exact values. So the standard deviation, it should work itself out if we use that midpoint. It should be fine. That's, we're limited a little bit by that because we don't have the actual numbers. But we're pretty close to what the numbers are actually you know, going to be, right? So that's, I think, what you're going to have to do there. So 108, there's three of those. So you plug that in three times, okay, and, uh, and so on. Now, could you, could you just plug in one number that's 108 times 3? I'm not sure. Probably you could do that times 3 and just plug that in as one number. <sighs> I think you need to do it this way, though, on the, cal on the calculator. Okay? So I'll just give you this question for that. And uh, actually, you know, you can do it this way, and, and uh, we'll see if it matches up, and I'll do it as well. Okay? Can you add up the 108 plus 108? 
Well, I think we're going to do it this way. We're going to do it this way um, first because the calculator will do all the rest of the calculations for you. So let's try it this way. All right? Okay, so here's the assignment 5.3. That was from yesterday using the formula. Here are the new questions for using the graphing calculator. And uh, I'll show you those on the screen here. So here's two right here. You don't have to actually use that frequency table that I was talking about. I, I won't give you a question like that. If you want to do seven, you can. Here's ten as part of your assignment. And thirteen is so here. That's also part of your assignment. Okay, I'll show you twelve as well.